So I've already um, talked a little bit about development uh, in animals, and uh, there's some terminology that's going to continue to come up that I haven't quite uh, explained yet or discussed. So um, this is where we're going to kind of do the comparison between uh, the protostome animals and the deuterostomes. What do those terms like even mean? Uh, why does it matter? Uh, we're going to go into the, the process a little bit of what uh, establishes them as being different. Um, and then again, um, just terms related to the, the compartments or the tissues or the processes that, that occur. So <clears throat> these are groups of animals that are all coelomates. So the term protostome and deuterostome do not apply to animals that are not coelomates. So the acelomates, the flatworms like platyhelminthes, it's like if you're asked, are they a protostome or deuterostome? Neither, they're, they're neither one because they don't have certain characteristics that are required for the definition of, of the, one of these two groups. So you have to be a coelomate or have a coelom um, to be considered. That's the first thing. Uh, overall, these are <clears throat> based on patterns of embryonic development. I like that uh, in that I'm a developmental biologist. I like, I like studying animal development. Uh, I like looking at the comparisons between uh, animals as they develop, uh, compare and contrast and the process and the control of it from uh, cellular and molecular level uh, and the organismal level uh, as what they result in. Uh, what we find is that right now with classification, we have all sorts of different things, traditional classification um, being merged with uh, molecular uh, systematics and what we find is that the choice of sometimes the genes that are being uh, sequenced and compared between organisms are helpful in looking at relationships and sometimes not helpful uh, they throw out a lot of these core uh, what we understood as relationships only to a few years later sometimes find that no it was wrong and we're going back to that so uh, how again I've mentioned this a number of times throughout the general course that we cover whether this is establishing a true relationship or not between the organisms may yet to be uh, uncovered. But the patterns, the terms, the structures, all those things are always going to remain the same. Okay, So if you learn these things, it's not going to matter if at some point they say, oh, but the deuterostomes are broken apart into different groups. It's fine. So the first thing we're looking at here is cleavage, which really is the term here for cell division. In embryos. So as embryos divide and the cells kind of, so when, when a cell like this undergoes cell division, which usually we call mitosis, they're actually um, actin filaments. So inside the cell there are cytoskeletal proteins that kind of form a loop around the middle of the cell and then they start to pull downward like this and then they start to squeeze the cell like this. Okay. And then as they continue to pull, they squeeze and squeeze because they're getting, you know, tighter and tighter. And then this kind of area where the cells are being, the cell itself is being divided into two cells is called a cleavage furrow. That's what this area would be right there, the furrow. Now, as cleavage occurs, there can be certain patterns of cleavage or cell division. Right? In the protostomes, what we see is something called spiral cleavage. That means that when the cells divide from a four cell stage to an eight cell stage, the cells, instead of staying stacked on top of one another, they shift. No, there, so this one came around from the other side. So they kind of rotate a little bit. They're not like lined up on top of one another. They move a little bit. Versus deuterostomes, where when we go from the four cell stage to the eight cell stage, they're lined up. And we call this radial cleavage. So deuterostomes have radial cleavage. Protostomes have spiral cleavage. So one of the first 
sorts of things that occur during embryonic development is cell division. And there's a certain pattern uh, to that cell division. And that's the, the first difference between the two. At this stage, we can also point out an additional difference. If you were to take one of the cells of this organism, like remove it, a cell itself. So a single cell is removed. That cell will then start to undergo cleavage and can become a whole organism. That's called indeterminate. meaning the fate of that cell is not yet determined. It, it has the genetic information to become the whole organism. In all the cells in your body, the nucleus of the cell contains the genes, contains the genetic information for all of you. So a cell in your skin contains information for the proteins that are in your heart or that are in your brain or that are in your toe. They're, they're all have all the information, it's just that not all the information is being expressed. A lot of it is repressed uh, or held back. All cells in the body contain the same information, but at some points in time, some of that information becomes determined. And so right here at this eight cell stage, in the protostomes, these cells already take on a determined fate. So if you were to remove one of the cells from this organism, it won't form into a whole organism. It's already received certain signals that's going to tell it to become a certain type of tissue, and it can't then, it still has the information, but it won't express the information for all the other tissues. So it's, it's kind of limited in that point, meaning it's already been determined. So that those are two kind of big differences happening right here at this point in time. The pattern itself of the cleavage and then the cell fate of those cells, either being determined already in the protostomes or not determined in the deuterostomes. Now, aside from that, everything else seems about the same. All right, so we, we divide and divide and divide. We have a ball of cells. Eventually, the ball of cells hollows out, all right, and we form a blastula. And in both of them, the internal cavity there, we call that the blastocele. cavities. Remember, seal is going to be a cavity, whether it's a pseudo seal or the true coelom or some cavity. Uh, so lenteron, you know, in the cnidarians, we see that term kind of used in a variety of different ways, all referring to a cavity in the organisms. Now, some of the cells in this region here, all right, of the blastula are receiving signals to begin, we're not going to go into this, all the details of it here, I might do a different lecture just on gastrulation. So we go over details and chemical signals and all, all, some movement of cells and all those sorts of things. But right now, it's just patterns uh, here. And what's going to happen is these cells are told um, to change and then to behave in a different sort of way. And what's going to happen, are those cells will invaginate and they're going to start to move inward like this. And those cells are then going to begin gastrulation. All right, that process of gut formation. And here you have in both of them, the formation of the archenteron or the beginnings of, the, of a primitive gut. Now, as that happens, this tube will start to continue through the animal's body. Now we're gonna to get to that tube and relate it back to the, the, the names uh, as we get to the end of this. That outer, I mixed up my colors here. So this, the outer cells now of the, what was the blastula, which is now I call the gastrula, uh, are gonna be the endoderm, or sorry, the ectoderm. Same over here. The cells making the gut cavity here, but those are endoderm. And then what we're going to have are two different sorts of things happening to form mesodermal tissue. So some cells are going to 
separate from these, sort of in these cornered regions. In the, the area right between the endoderm and ectoderm, some cells are going to come out and they're going to start to form mesodermal cells. And those mesodermal cells are going to start to just form a solid clump of cells. And they'll divide and they'll divide and they'll divide. And they'll start to fill in this space with solid tissue. Okay. And eventually what will happen is that solid tissue will then have an opening in the middle of it, hopefully, I can do this here, and split like this. Okay, so that split mesodermal tissue is referring, referring to a process called schizocele. So this will come back to if you to read some differences. You know, what's the difference between a protostome and a deuterostome? Oh, protostomes have spiral cleavage. So, so protostomes have schizocele. So this is kind of explaining what, is, what are some of these terms? What's schizocele? Okay, so schizo means to split. Okay. And remember, seal again refers to the cavity. So it's a cavity formed through a split in the tissue. And so that's what we have happening here. This is going to be now, this cavity will be the coelom. It's a cavity completely surrounded by mesoderm. And it was formed through the mesoderm actually splitting from solid mesodermal tissue. That's how the coelom develops in protostomes. In deuterostomes, <clears throat> we have our radial cleavage. It results in a blastula. The blastula undergoes gastrulation. It starts to form the endodermal gut. But then we have these pouches forming. So little pouches will start to form off the end of the gut, the endoderm, and those pouches will expand. So I'll put that in there, and I'll try to continue the drawing the same sort of way I did before. Okay, so these so big pouches are forming here, and then eventually this process sort of continues, and the gut you know, continues to form all the way through, and it breaks away for, sort of from the pouches. They detach and separate by producing different types of cell adhesion molecules. Then they no longer attach to one another until the mesodermal and the uh, endodermal cells pull apart. And then this starts to form compartments, which become, again, the coelom. So we have a coelom, which is a body cavity, which is surrounded by mesoderm. But in this particular case, it's produced by enterocele, uh, which is, is this pouch, pouching of the, let me just simplify it and just call it the gut. So when the gut tissue starts to develop, there's a pouching of the gut, like these little extensions pull off it. And as they do, they continue to develop, they differentiate, and then they become the mesodermal tissue. So then when you look at the embryos sort of in the end that have developed from these processes, they will look very similar in, in most ways. It, but the process, or and processes, multiple processes that, that got them to this point were different. There were a variety of different things happening. One of the final things to kind of mention here has to do with the names, you know, of the groups coming back to the beginning. Stone, okay? So we're talking about mouth. So protostome refers to first mouth. And deuterostome is second mouth. So what does that mean, right? What, what is that talking about? It's talking about really the process of gastrulation. When gastrulation occurs, and that inward uh, movement of those endodermal cells that start to create a tube through the animal's body, 
this tube, this first opening, will become the mouth of the animal. So this, based on the way I oriented these drawings the whole time, this would be the mouth, and then this would be a tube, a complete digestive system running through the animal and its anus at the other end. In deuterostomes, it's the opposite. The mouth is the second opening, right? So what's happened is the very first opening that's formed here is the anus. And the second opening, as the tube continues all the way through, it gets to the other side and then it connects and opens up and then that forms the mouth. Right? So mouth forms second. And that's a deuterostome. And you're just looking at them, especially looking at these drawings, you wouldn't know the difference. Looking actually at uh, some embryos at this stage, you also wouldn't necessarily know where or how these, these things formed unless you actually observe the entire process of development. Because these things are genetically controlled, they imply then genetic differences between the organisms, which is what we look at when we look at gene sequencing. Is what are genetic differences between the organisms? Uh, this is a way of actually looking at those genes in action, as opposed to just looking at codes of A's and T's and G's and then trying to derive some meaning from that, uh, this is the meaning you know, of many of those things. It's to carry out cellular activity, uh, t activity within tissues and whole organisms. It's, that's the genetic information is what regulates and defines and controls those things. So if we watch those things occur, we are seeing the action you know, of those uh, genes being expressed. And so that's kind of where it sets us up, looking at relationships between organisms, but the protostomes are more closely related than the deuterostomes, and deuterostomes are more closely related. We've already talked about this group in, in this course uh, previously, the protostomes. This is just kind of finishing up and to do a comparison, because now we move into um, a final group of animals that are considered deuterostomes, and that's for us in the kingdom animalia are going to be the echinoderms. and the chordates. So those will be the next two uh, phyla that we end up going through, and which is interesting because you know, we're, we're in this phyla, chordata. Echinoderms are the sea stars. So what does that mean, uh, essentially? That it means we're more closely related to sea stars, for example, than we are to any of these other animals. So like crustaceans or you know insects or mollusks or anything else. So when we have groups of organisms like a cephalopod with a fairly well-developed brain and camera-like eyes that have lenses that look a lot like the way our eyes are and the way they form, we're not that closely related to them. We're much closer related to a sea star who doesn't have eyes. He has little eye spots. They don't even really have a brain. Um, so how are we more closely related to them? Well, part of it is because we do develop in the same way, and then they just develop off in a way and stop, and then we continue on uh, through the way of the vertebrates, which we'll, we'll kind of get into. So for this is just, a, what's the difference between a protostome and a deuterostome? Uh, some of the terminology with um, spiral versus radial cleavage, schizocele versus, I wrote here, intracele, and the fates of some of the tissues and of those openings.